Guys, Dr. Daphne Lim, Board Certified Laser Dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about um, specific skincare. So I've talked about general skincare, so um, many, many videos on things like vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, actives in regards to skin. Uh, however, today we'll be more focused on how to actually uh, treat skin or what skincare should you use if you have sensitive skin. Now, one of the most common causes of sensitive skin is rosacea. So rosacea usually affects um, uh, people around the ages of 30 onwards, so about 30 to 60, and it can manifest in various ways, including things like skin sensitivities, redness, flushing, blushing, capillaries, broken capillaries, um, thickened skin, for example, on your forehead or the, or the nose area. But most commonly, it can actually uh, manifest as pimples, so much like acne minus the blackheads and the whiteheads. So that's called papula pustula rosacea. Now, for rosacea, skin care has to be very accurate, it has to be precise, because when we talk about skin, your threshold for um, uh, irritation, for patients who have sensitive skin like rosacea, your threshold, instead of being this high, it's way down here, which means anything you use, including things like um, sunscreens even, or, or vitamin A, or retinol, any skincare product can actually decrease that threshold to a point where you have irritation. So, in context of skincare, let's start from the basics. First of all, when you use a, a wash, uh, use something very simple. Dermatologists like using uh, things like Cetaphil. Yes, we do know it contains things like uh, propylene glycol, but in the vast majority of patients, that's not the problem. Um, the problem is to actually decrease the amount of irritation with your astringents or um, your cleansers. So, for example, uh, Re product recommendations, first of all, Cetaphil. CeraVe makes a really good one. Uh, La roche Posay has a very good range in the context of uh, uh, rosacea-prone skin. So things like uh, Tolerane or Rosalac, right? So that is your cleanser. If you want to use a moisturizer, it's very similar. You want to use things which has very little in the way of active ingredients. Once again, dermatologists like Cetaphil, yeah? And other products, like I said, include the La roche Posay range. Now, in the context of what actives you can use in, in rosacea prone skin? The answer is not that easy, yeah? Because it's a bit of trial and error. In fact, it's a little bit of trial and a lot of error. Once you understand your skincare threshold, you can actually add from there. Um, for example, does it mean that rosacea patients can't use retinoids? The answer is perhaps, yeah? So what you could do is you can use a little test spot. So use a very good retinoid, for example, like a Bargy 0.5, and you dilute that with a little bit of moisturizer. So basically your uh, concentration is a little bit of pea size uh, drop here, pea size drop there, mix it together. Instead of being 0.5, it's a 0.25. The same applies if you're using something that's a 1% concentration. If you mix it in equal amounts with a benign moisturizer, you get half the actual amount. And if you mix it accordingly, you can actually titrate it right down to something like 20% of the actives. So if you don't have any redness, burning, sting, irritation, flakiness, increase the dose. Yeah? So in other words, increase both the application, increase the concentration, and go from there. Remember, everyone has a threshold, right? So you've got to find yours. With rosacea skincare, you can't afford to actually try products because sooner or later your threshold will decrease and you will get uh, rip-roaring uh, rosacea. So this applies to everything. I'm just giving an example with, with retinol, yeah? um, but it also applies for some things like um, vitamin C or, or ascorbic acid. Just as a background rule, most dermatologists would not advise ascorbic acid or anything acidic um, in rosacea prone skin. The reason being is that with these formulations, with good formulations of ascorbic acid, the pH is somewhere between 2 to 2.5, and that's very irritating on your skin. So ahead of that, most dermatologists would go, let's use a vitamin B3, something like niacinamide, because that can be anti-inflammatory. So that's the first with vitamin B3. Secondly, we probably advise um, a retinol, but in a very low concentration. And thirdly, if you must, you can try some ascorbic acid, but there are far more uh, effective treatments out there if you're trying to manage your rosacea skin. Guys, I hope that um, is helpful for you. Uh, as a dermatologist, most of what I see is laser orientated. Yeah? So when I treat rosacea, uh, it's with laser. However, these fundamentals yeah, in regards to skincare cannot be ignored because they actually build a foundation upon which your rosacea will improve. Guys, thanks for that um, attention. <laughs>
Um, look, if you have rosacea, please chime your thoughts in regards to um, what works well for you. It's an interactive channel, which means the more conversation we can have, um, the more we can help, uh, I guess, patients in general. Thanks for that, guys. See you next week.